Leon Edwards could get that title fight, Hogan. right? But he could also get screwed again because now guess who's entered the conversation? Your boy, Conor McGregor. That's what I was going to ask. Because Conor entered the conversation, does Kamaru Usman have to pay attention to it, right? Like, I mean, look at Conor. Conor does an ax to Notorious. Tremendous when they asked about the title shot and also fighting up at heavyweight, uh, 170. He goes, tremendous. I would love this record to be a three-division champ. I fight for the 170-pound title. I will spark him. That will be the fastest knockout in UFC history, 13 seconds. Most knockdowns in UFC title fight history, five. And then another KO in a UFC title fight, three title fights. Three KOs, three records. It's right there. Then Usman goes, spark who? You must be talking about that pipe you've been smoking. Unlike you, if I'm going to talk, <laughs> Lee, I'll you. Now be quiet before I call Poirier or Habib or Diaz to finish you again, pound for pound kick. But as we talked about with Poirier, Kamaru Usman, as a businessman, has to deal with this McGregor situation because Connor is hands down the biggest star in the sport. DC, if I'm Kamaru Usman, if Dana White and the UFC want to make this fight, I don't, listen, I'm not going, I don't know how y'all send y'all contracts in, DC. It, 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 it could be different for y'all. But whatever way I send the contract in, it's going to be the fastest way I can freaking possibly send it. I don't care if I need to text it, if I need to email it, if I got to docu-sign yeah. it, or if I got to get a private jet and go to Dana White's house and figure it out, you get that deal done. One, because Kamaru Usman can smash Conor McGregor. He's bigger. He's stronger. He's more physical. He's the guy that's continuing to become more skilled. And do you know the money that Kamaru Usman can make? And you said it yourself early on in the show, DC. It's a log jam there. So give him an opportunity to get a super fight. And whether fortunate or unfortunate, the biggest super fight in MMA, in the, in the UFC, is if you get a fight, a chance to fight Conor McGregor. If they came to me and we were doing this show one day and they said, hey, man, you're not going to get to do the show because in eight weeks, DC is going to fight Conor McGregor. He's going to come out of retirement. I would understand. <laughs> and I would say, get your money, my dog. Because if you're Kamaru Usman and you Everybody see this, <laughs> you absolutely answer, you absolutely reply, and you try to make it happen. You fight him, DC, wouldn't you? Well, you see that... But you see that in a lot of fighters, right? Like, you see it in a lot of them. Like, when Jake Paul calls somebody's name, they just rush to it because Jake Paul brings the eyes right now. Conor McGregor says someone's name, they rush to it because Conor brings the eyes always. So if you're Kamaru Usman, and this thing becomes a real possibility if you get through Colby Covington. I will say this on record, as I've said before. Colby Covington is the toughest fight for Kamaru Usman in the welterweight division right now. Because of his cardio, his pace, his pressure, and his wrestling. He is a very tough fight for Usman. But if Usman gets through Covington again and Conor McGregor fight is an opportunity, why wouldn't he do it? Any person with a brain would do that. Usman fought against Masvidal on seven days when Masvidal had all the mm -hmm. hype, right? When he had been knocking everybody out, got on the plane, stopped in Italy for the pizza, did all that whole thing, and he sold more pay-per-views than he's ever sold in his life. Then he fought him again, right? But he fought him again after fighting Gilbert Burns and seeing the difference in a pay-per-view against a guy that is a very difficult fight but may not have the name mm -hmm. and a guy that is a easier fight but has a massive name. So if I'm Kamara Usman for my style, I'm definitely taking that or looking into it as an opportunity because you and I both know that Conor McGregor is the biggest star in all of mixed martial arts. And that won't change. Wins, losses... It won't right. change. He will constantly stay as the marquee name in mixed martial arts. I think what, what shows that more than anything, DC, is Conor McGregor hasn't won a fight in an extremely long time. He's 0-2 in his last two fights against Dustin Poirier. I can't remember a time since this show has started. Granted, we haven't been talking about UFC together for a long time but that we haven't spoken about Conor McGregor, whether whether it's a tweet, whether it's him about to fight, whether it's him after a fight, whether it's him talking about other people fighting. That's the type of draw Conor McGregor has created himself. This wasn't someone else. And I mm -hmm. think the thing that's starting, that's starting to be forgotten about Conor McGregor is he built his stardom on these, though. 
and those aren't yeah. the same right now. Yeah. Those aren't having the same effect on the guy standing across from him. From him, and I believe Kamaru Usman understands that, but he understands that the money that flows with him will still be there. I can remember it like it was yesterday, even though it wasn't long enough ago when. Conor McGregor was ready to walk out in Las Vegas. I watched people rush from the top of the arena just to get a look at this dude, just to get a picture on their phone, just to get a video, just to experience who Conor McGregor was. It was different. The electricity in the building, the energy was different. If you can get a part of that energy, you can also get a part of that money. And that's something every fighter should look into. Yep. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.